affiliation. Thank you. <clears throat> now, uh, we have a few announcements and housekeeping items to take care of for our meeting this morning. The first is, I just want to be sure that folks are familiar with how to use the putting up your hand and the reactions button. Um, now, you can put up your hand in physically, but we won't be able to see that necessarily. So we'll need, we need folks to be able to use the function on Zoom to put up your hand. Now, we know that um, some of you are far too familiar with Zoom. Some of you are somewhat familiar with Zoom, and some of you are still just learning the ins and outs of Zoom. So I have a few slides depending on, oh, Wayne's iPad just raised hand. Um, I can see that now, which is awesome. So he's figured it out. But if you haven't figured it out, I've got a few um, slides to show you. So if you're on a computer, um, you should have at the very bottom something that's a dot, dot, dot. You see right here, I've got it circled in red. And if you click that, this comes up. And so there's the clapping, thumbs up, laughing, crying, surprised, heart, and celebration. And then there's raise hand. Raise hand is the one you want when, um, um, when it comes time to do our voting. Now, if you are in a household right now where more than one person is participating in our uh, worship and meeting, but you only have one device, and you want to raise your hand, all you need to do is decide right now who will be using the raise hand and who will not be using the raise hand. Because whoever is not using the raised hand, if you want to raise your hand, um, you just type your name in the, um, in the chat box. Or if you have multiple devices, open up another device um, uh, and your uh, internet bandwidth can handle it. And then you can just use the raise hand. So this is how you do it for on a computer. If you're on an iPad, it should there should be up at the top, a um, the dot, dot, dot more. And if you select that, this comes up and this raise hand at the very top, that's what you want. You can also see there's chat there. So that's how you can open up the chat if you're, um, uh, if you want to enter into the chat. And then that's how you know at the very bottom, that's how you will know that there is a, um, your hand is raised. Uh, if you are on an Android phone, um, you start with that, you click on the more, that will bring up this raise hand um, and all of that. And you can see the chat there as well. And then that'll bring up your um, your hand. And now if you're on a tablet, which is not an iPad, you'll see at the bottom, you've got the dot, dot, dot more. If you click that, this will come up and you can click that raise hand. Um, now, I know there's some folks who are posting in the, oh, okay. Uh, Okay, so just a heads up, I cannot see the chat. So if you're trying to get in touch with me, just know that I can't um, see your, your chat right now. There's just too much going on. I, I, can't, uh, I can't do that. Um, but we do have Paul Warder who is checking the chat. Um, so he can help you there if you're putting in, if you have a question in the chat. Um, and if you just need to get in touch with me, just unmute yourself and let me know. Um, okay, so the other thing you need to know is that because this is an annual meeting and we are, um, we'll, we will be voting on things, we will need your first and last name. Um, or if you're not comfortable for whatever reason, including your last name, just your first initial. Um, just to, you know, if we've got multiple Lauras so we can keep track of which Laura you might be, for example. Um, but so we need your first and last name associated with your Zoom. So 
for those uh, who aren't sure how to do that, if you see here, um, I've got a screenshot and I've opened up the participants list. So you see here at the bottom, it says participants and there's a one. Um, in ours, it should be, it will be a much higher number, but you click on that to open up this participants. And then if you hover over your name or whatever you've got right now, you'll see you've got unmute and more. If you click on the more, it pulls up this thing, edit profile picture or rename. You're gonna click rename. It'll bring this up and you can type in your name, first and last name. And um, if you'd like to take this opportunity to include your pronouns, that would be awesome, um, but you don't need to. And then you click okay and that changes your name. So just so you know, we won't be able to count any votes if they don't have a name associated with them. Um, so there are a few folks I see, oh, we've got some people who are changing that right now. That's awesome. Um, so your first, you want your first name and your last name or at least your last initial, um, just so that we can um, ensure that we've got um, people counted properly. Okay, I've just taken a quick look through and it looks like everybody is, um, oops, ah, stop share. It looks like everybody is looking um, pretty, fairly ready. We've got our names. Some people have their hands up. So um, if you click on that hands up again, it will lower your hand. Um, Cause right now it also, since we're not voting on something, it looks like you're raising your hand to speak. David Cameron, are you trying to, to speak right now? If so, just unmute yourself and, uh, and speak. There we go. Yeah, yes, I'm raising my hand to speak. Uh, for people who have the old version of uh, Zoom still, you yeah. find the raise hand under the participants list. You have to go into participants, go to the three dots beside your name, and then raise hand there. Thank you, David. That's really helpful um, uh, because that's uh, a whole other, I thought I covered it with four different devices, but I didn't cover it all. So thank you, David. That Zoom is constantly updating, which is great, but it means they're changing things. So it's sometimes hard to keep up with what's happening. So I have, so that we can practice the hand thing, so Diane Greenholt, you've got your hand up. Do you want to speak or do you, or are you just practicing? So David and Diane, if you could lower your, oh, I can lower your hand here. Okay. Let's see. Okay. So just a test trial here. Who, if raise your hand, if, you are looking forward to COVID being over. Are you in or are you doing something else? Mm. So what is it? Clap your hand or no, there's I'm one sorry. that says raise hand. No, I don't have that. Okay. What device are you using, Romani? Uh, uh, what do you call? Is, is it a computer or an iPad? Sorry, laptop. It's a laptop. Okay. So, do so you I go have... to re you said I go to reactions, right? Yes. So reactions, what I have is clap, thumb, heart, joy. Okay, so 
Romani and Rob. I see Rob might be having some trouble. Romani can find it just below. I it's don't the have bar. Um, if you, Romani, you might have an older version of Zoom. So click on participants and it should hopefully come up. So click on participants and I just click on my name. Um, no, you have to go down to the bottom of participants. It says invite, mute me, and three dots. Click on the three dots. And now you'll find hand, raise hand. Okay, I have raise hand oh. in participants. Perfect, perfect. All right, we're, we're getting there. <clears throat> this is taking a little while and I'm sorry, but because we're using this to vote, we want to make sure everybody has figured it out. So. Okay, so Rob, um, under participants, it sounds like you only have rename. What if you go to, do you have something where it says dot, 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 and more? I just have more. I just have more and uh, uh, arrow sign. Um. And, and I think I have the same version as you, so I can see this. Uh, so if you click on more, it probably just says rename. Is yeah. that correct? Okay. Yeah. So go right down to the bottom of that box and it will say invite mutiny and three dots. Do you see that? Yeah. Click on the oh, three great dots. Hand. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I see it. Thanks. If you want to vote, yeah. So yeah. Okay. Um, we've got a few folks, the Husses, I see. Do you know how to raise your hands, Dennis and Elizabeth, are you, uh, on using Zoom? <laughs> well, I, she I, waved, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm unmuted at the moment. I'm into uh, invite and mute me on participants. There's no hand there. Okay, if you um, click on, is there, what device are you using, Dennis? Is it a phone or a computer? I'm using an Air, Air uh, an Apple uh, Mac. Okay. So is there a, a button that says reactions? Um, along, yeah. the, along the bottom? Yeah. I have, I have mute, stop video, participants, chat, uh, share screen, um, we record. We record. And uh, see what else is on at the bottom. Uh, reactions, there they are. I, it, it was covered by the participants. That's why I couldn't see it. Yeah, there it is. Uh, let's see. Uh, there's raise hand. Okay, got it. Yep. Okay. So I should be able to uh, go back now to. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's there now. Yep. Okay. Yeah, I couldn't see it because I had the participants covering it. Mm. Yeah, every. Every device and version is different, so it's taken some time. Okay, so we know Rob has found it, Diane. Um, Alex Ross, are you there and are you able to raise your hand? Nope. Yes, excellent. Um, West Min, um, Laura, is that you? It is not me. Okay, um, West Min, the person whose uh, thing says West Min, are you able to put your name in there so we know who you are? Okay, uh, Eric, do you know how to raise your hand in the um, Zoom? <clears throat> okay, uh, the Florizone family, do you know how to raise your hand and Bonnie and Steve? Yep, all good. Awesome. Okay. So if you have any further questions, just put it in the chat box and either Paul will help you 
or um, if somebody else sees it, then they'll be able to help you. Um, so you will need to lower uh, your hand, just so we're not confused about thinking you have something you want to say. And you just lower it the exact same way that you raised it. So it's an extra chance to practice that. Okay. Now, now the other way we will be voting um, and showing, um, um, uh, Cynthia, do you have uh, something to say or you just haven't lowered your hand? Sorry to point you out if you're not. Okay, good. <laughs> Good, good. <laughs> okay, so the other way we'll be voting is through a poll. So I am going to throw a test poll up here. And you can vote by clicking on what you would like. Now, um, we hope to have everybody vote on something just so we know that everybody's been able to vote. We don't want to later on get to something and um, find out that um, somebody just wasn't able to vote. So if you could vote on this um, trial question we've got up right now, just so we know everybody's able to, to vote. So the question is, do you grow plants for your garden? Do you grow them yourself? And the, answer, the possibilities are yes, definitely. I love to grow plants. Um, or plants are great, but I usually buy them elsewhere. Or plants already grow outside. Why do I need to plant more? <laughs> or we've got, you can grow plants indoors. And then uh, for those who don't like any of those answers, I'd rather not answer. And that way we know, oh, you guys are amazing. We are at 26 out of 29 people have voted on this. So, oh, so you 20. click on, you Sorry, click on submit, right? First you yes. click on and then click on the hand. Uh, not, not on your hand. The hand is a, a separate way to, uh, the hand is how we were voting most of the time, but occasionally there are three times that we will, three other polls that we'll be having. So we've got 28 out of 29 people have voted. Um, if you have not voted, are you able to unmute yourself to let us know if there's a problem with your ability to vote? And it also could just be that that person stepped away from their device, which is perfectly fine as well. Okay, so I'm going to share those with you and you'll see that 57% of the people here um, are love to grow their plants. Now, for those of you who have multiple people on one device, if you wanted to vote on this but couldn't because only one person can vote, you can type your answer into the chat box when that comes, okay? Okay. So, I think um, the only other announcements, I just want to let you know, um, because this is a, um, an annual meeting and a worship meeting, or a worship um, event, um, this will definitely be a longer service, as you can already tell. Um, it should go much quicker from here on out, because we had to figure out all those little bumps along the way. Uh, but <clears throat> it will be longer. Um, we did sort of advertise this as a bit of a brunch event. So hopefully you are um, either, if you haven't already had breakfast, you're feeling comfortable to eat breakfast while, or brunch while you're uh, at worship here. Feel free to have some lunch. Feel free to get up and leave and come back uh, if you need to. Um, feel, take your device if you want. <clears throat> um, if you're... Um, if you're just kind of feeling zoomed out, feel free to turn off your, your video for a little bit um, and keep the audio. Uh, we are having, we do have a five minute break built directly in because uh, some people like myself, um, I don't like to leave uh, an event or a meeting, um, but um, if you offer a, a break, I will take a, a break. So for those who just don't want to leave because it's going to be so exciting, uh, we do have a scheduled break. Um, so just know that if you're that type that just uh, can't. Um, I believe it is 
the break happens after we vote on the slate of officers for council, in case you're wondering when that's going to happen, um, which should be about the midway point. And that's everything. Okay, awesome. So, oh, Janice, do you have something to say? Yeah, I just wanted to remind people that today our online auction begins. Mm -hmm. So be sure to check that out. I've been on the site and there are lots of lovely wow. items that you can bid on. So that's um, available starting today and it will run for the next two weeks. Dennis, you, Janice. there's no more room on the credit card. That's your problem, Brock. <laughs> Um, do we need to put Janice and Brock in a breakout room to work that out? Let me know. We can do that. <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> um, so would somebody put the link to the online auction in the chat box so that folks can see that? Is that the order of worship is the agenda for this morning's annual meeting? Again, if I can have someone to move that. I will. Thanks, Alex. And someone to second that. Great. I will. Thank oh, you. you got all right. And now I will ask all those in favor of this motion to please raise your hand. It's Brian. Who seconded it? I believe it was Ashley. Was that right, Ashley? So if they could say their name, at least their first name, um, when they... I didn't think it was me. Otherwise, okay. I would have. Um, but yeah, it was me, I guess. <laughs> Happy to do it. Excuse me. If you haven't voted, if you could please do that now, if you approve. Motion carried. Yeah, I put the lower hand, so that's how you do the hand picture. And uh, the next motion is that the minutes of our March 1st, 2020 congregational meeting of Westminster United be approved as circulated. So move, Donna Harvey. Thanks, Donna. And a seconder? I will. Thanks, Alex. And all those in favor of accepting the minutes as provided, please raise your hand. You don't have to raise it there. Because mm. right, the hand is up, mm -hmm. see? Mm. Uh, see those hands? Mm -hmm. I do that. Yeah. and carried. Okay, thanks friends. All right. All right, if everyone could lower their hands now, just uh, otherwise we'll think that you're wanting to speak. Um, and um, we are going to move into our first breakout room. Um, I know not everybody is comfortable with breakout rooms, so if you're not comfortable, just don't accept when it uh, asks. Um, but or you can accept and then just mute it. And uh, for now, we are going to be in this room for about um, um, for about four minutes, um, and. I'm putting in the chat right now so that you can access it um, when the time comes. So for those who joined us in our, um, our field trip to the hub, we uh, asked you to consider a couple of things. The one, what was most surprising to you? And two, what would you love to see more of? Now we had um, at least 10 of us uh, go on that field trip, which was awesome. And so for those of you who weren't able to join that field trip, um, 
If you weren't able to join that field trip, then um, I'm sure that you have had experiences in your life of worship other than Westminster, or even um, thinking about Westminster. So for those who weren't um, able to be at the field trip, um, when answering those same questions, what was most surprising and what would you love to see more of, consider other op option, opportunities you've had to um, experience worship in other ways. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. Um, got almost everyone back. Excellent. Awesome. We didn't lose anyone on the way. Fantastic. So we're just going to take like two minutes. And if you either want to unmute yourself to share or just include it in the chat, everything in our chat box uh, will be saved as well so that we can keep some of your answers um, that council can look at as well. So anyone want to share anything that was surprising um, and or that you would like to share uh, to see more of um, either at Westminster or in the world? Two, go for it, Sue. What? <laughs> I, I, I was asking Sue, our chair, our chair. Sue is our chair. <laughs> Where'd she go? <laughs> oh. So I'll speak. Go ahead, dear. More love and compassion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We, we also just quickly talked about presentation style, Andrea. We, we talked about, uh, you know, maybe, maybe looking at big screen because we're getting used to that kind of, you know, uh, utilization uh, even, even a bit more and uh, maybe, you know, kind of an entertainment, uh, you know, I say entertainment, but I mean, you know, the music side that we, we kind of enhance, uh, you know, the scenario there, you know, maybe work with Cynthia and Steve and so on, but just kind of work with enhancing that in some manner. Anyway, that's our story. We'll, we'll be quiet now. <laughs> Thanks. Any other surprises or things you'd love to see more of? I like the, the, the useful approach and the the blending of the music, the poetry, and the and the I would say the pushing of the edges of faith, <laughs> the very much an inclusiveness and allowing for doubt and allowing for exploration. Uh, I thought they did a really really good job of that. Yeah, and to add to that, Donna, one thing we discussed was how the format itself wasn't that different. They did a land acknowledgement, they did the call, like the actual pieces, but they didn't walk you through and name each of those as categories or labels. And then the way that they engaged the youth and the others to participate in those was just slightly different. So for instance, the way they use chat is very conversational throughout, and you're kind of adding your thoughts as you go. And you're so you're taking in the content and then sharing that back out to see if that informs somebody else's and so on. And so, and they have lots of music and the same types of things we included, just slightly different um, in some way. We already have uh, somebody posting in the chat box and you're all very welcome to post any surprises or things you'd love to see more of um, in the chat box. But for now we'll move on. We have um, a bit of a, I, I'm excited about it, um, it's a little bit longer of a video, um, which says a lot. This is a video that a number of council members uh, per participated in, sharing some highlights of things that have happened um, at Westminster over the last years in 2020. We There's a lot that has happened in our world that is not a highlight, um, is a very opposite of a highlight. But within that, there have been so many amazing moments. And we wanted to take a moment and share, um, <clears throat> each person is sort of speaking from their perspective of their role, um, but we have a video to share about some of the highlights of 2020. As chair of council, the highlight for me this past year was working with such a dedicated, caring group of council members. There were many situations that we needed to discuss and navigate through, 
many of which we are still discussing and navigating. And this group of people consistently showed up and always had the best interest of the Westminster congregation at heart. As we move forward, I am confident that Council will continue to share the energy, insight, and commitment that I have so appreciated this past year. A highlight for 2020 is everybody's generosity to Oxford House Mission Service and our own church. Uh, we also received um, grants from the wage subsidy because we had less uh, revenue, so that was very helpful. We were able to meet all our bills and uh, keep everybody paid. I'm Laura Buck, and as your most recent chair of worship, I wanted to share with you some highlights from last year, 2020. Um, so without missing a beat, we were able to Zoom and live stream all our services. Not one Sunday did we miss last year between all the lockdown changes and everything, and I think that's pretty impressive. It did mean we had to rethink a lot of rituals between pageants and Easter and Advent and funerals and baptisms, but we made it happen. And what we ended up doing was you invited us into your homes across Canada. We were able to connect with people that um, maybe remote virtual worship uh, actually ended up looking out better for. And then we had to extend our reach to people who virtual worship wasn't something that they connected with. Um, and those were some highlights is trying to bridge those gaps and make sure that we were still meeting the needs of uh, everyone at Westminster. So thank you for riding the waves with us. And all that it has helped, clearly, it has been an unusual journey. Masks, distancing, sanitizing, few face-to-face -face connections, and becoming an expert at Zooming. However, the staff at Westminster surpassed all expectations and responded to the many COVID challenges that we all have faced this past year. They did this with creativity, talent, and perseverance. What a crew. Sarah Lynn in our office, such a strength. Ever present and always capable. Cynthia, so creative and talented, giving us the joy of beautiful music on an ongoing basis. And then Steve Boothby, ever willing and ready to bring voice to our hymns and the special anthems that we all so enjoy. Our personnel continue to supersede. And the highlight for all of us was not only survival, but a depth of resilience that makes us all proud to be associated with Westminster United and the wonderful, wonderful people associated with this open and welcoming church. Have a great day and continue to meet the challenge. To our superwoman, Westminster United Minister, what a year. You have covered so many bases this past year, not only having to respond to protocols and the requirement of lockdowns and virtual presentations, but drawing on every ounce of ingenuity and faith that might be required of a spiritual leader. But you had to be ever present and aware of the needs of so many others. Thank you. And thank you again for being there for us and for leading the way to a better day in the weeks that lie ahead. You are indeed a force to be reckoned with. And we at Westminster are proud to have you as our guiding light. Thank you very much. I'm Donna Harvey, uh, head of the Stewardship Committee. Uh, our highlights for this past year for stewardship, uh, we, have, we have a few, and I'll try to make it quick. Uh, we managed, thanks to the wonderful participation of everybody through the year, to have a balanced budget for 2020, which is amazing when you consider that everything basically shut down in March. Uh, and to, to get through the rest of the year and have a balanced budget is just really quite remarkable. So thank you to absolutely everybody. Uh, another highlight is our wonderful participation uh, for supporting of, of the, of the, um, from the Bonaby Creek community in Oxford House. And this year we managed to raise uh, 6,000 to the latest figure, $6,726, which is 
2,700 more than we raised last year uh, for the community, which was really hard hit by uh, by the, the COVID pandemic. And um, um, there were just so many needs there. And, and it was wonderful that the Westminster community came through and offered such fulsome support for the, the people of Oxford House, so thank you for that. And then the other highlight, which is absolutely nothing to do with, <laughs> with money, just wonderful fun, was our adventurous, adventurous drive-through that we had at the beginning of the fall stewardship campaign. It was November the 7th, we planned it in advance and thought, okay, what kind of theme can we have? And we figured, okay, how about we're heading towards Advent, how about an Advent theme? And uh, wouldn't you know, it turned out to be one of the warmest days of the fall, which was actually quite lovely. So here we had a whole bunch of outside the church, um, a drive through, except the, the glorious thing was that, that uh, people uh, came and parked and then visited, standing six feet apart, wearing masks, etc. But uh, m most people came and stayed for at least an hour, an hour and a half. We must have had 40 to 50 people. It was lovely. It was just wonderful that we had the front of the church all decorated out with Christmas lights and Christmas trees and hay and little manger area. Uh, we had goodies to hand out. We had stewardship packages to hand out. And it was just a wonderful way of connecting in November since we hadn't really seen hardly anybody since March. So that was glorious. And one way or another, we got to figure out another way this coming year to, <laughs> for this year, uh, how we can how we can get together again. And I, I'm sure we will figure it out. So uh, thank you all, and it's been a wonderful year. Thank you for your wonderful, fulsome um, involvement with Westminster in so many different ways. Thanks so much. And, uh, I would like to talk a bit about uh, the uh, CMC, which I uh, look after every year. The story this year uh, for the CMC was COVID-19. The Joint Committee had to narrate uh, first the lockdown, then the restart. The restart morphed into a rollout of improved internet access to support the streaming by each congregation. It's not uh, done quite yet, but after this is over, the capabilities of each congregation will be so much better. Other highlights were repairing the eaves trough and fixing the outside lighting of the cedars, if you could call that a highlight. I'm looking forward to no more crises and inspiring, uh, improving the life and feel of the grounds and building with uh, new shrubs or trees, new paint, etc. And I'm hoping to uh, see everybody on the other side of this COVID-19 thing next year. Laura Black and I've been your team lead for the Equity and Inclusion team. And our highlights for 2020 is starting. Uh, council approved, we created some goals, um, and I got a team together. We have great 12 um, great diverse background people um, who have various experiences around equity work, as well as different relationships with Westminster. And we've had some really fruitful dialogue up to this point. Um, and what we're doing is responding to calls of action and no more silence around inequitable systemic conditions that the church is part of. And so acknowledging that and doing some unlearning around that and then reviewing some global diversity inclusion benchmark checklists um, around things like our mission vision and values at the church um, or leadership at the church and really assessing where are we at and where could we be going um, and we're just starting that work uh, but it's great work and I'm glad to have you with me Yes, a literal highlight, Scott, <laughs> lights outside. And as someone who was there until quite late the other night, those lights are amazing. Oh my goodness, it's so bright and it feels so much safer for somebody who's often by herself there at night. Um, so I agree, huge, huge highlight. <laughs> Um, so, folks, we are going to take a moment to, I'll pass it over to Janice about the committee reports, but I don't want you to forget about those highlights because we're putting you into a, a group again for just three or four minutes to talk about some more highlights. But before that, I'll pass it off to Janice. Thanks, Andrea. So our next motion is to accept our committee reports as submitted. And before I do um, the vote on that, I would just like to take a moment to thank a few people. 
And first off is Karen Seeley, who is stepping down as our chair of the social committee. Uh, thank you to Karen for her years of dedication and leadership in that role. Also, I want to thank our interim chairs, uh, Laura Black and Sue Ann Campbell, who both stepped in uh, for a shorter period of time to help us out. And that was also greatly appreciated. And I'll be talking a little, little bit more about vacancies coming up in the next motion, but um, an interim position is something we really encourage to. Don't feel you need to be committed to the whole year if it's an interest to you and you want to do it for a shorter amount of time. Please know that that's also available. All right, so now we're looking at the motion to accept committee reports as presented. So if I could have a mover on that motion, please. Just unmute yourself if you're able. I'll move. Thanks, Rob. Yeah. And a seconder. Also, Diane, I see you've got I'll, a hand up. Uh, go ahead, go ahead, Donna. All right, thanks. Dennis, um, so that was Rob and then Diane. And then I think um, what I'm going to do this time is switch it around a little bit um, just to help us move through it. And that is, I'm going to ask for votes against. So those that are opposed to uh, raise your hand now. So if you're not opposed, just hang on. But uh, if anyone's opposed, raise your hand now, please. Janice, it's Brian. May I get the seconder? Diane Greenholch. Thanks. Yeah, thanks, Brian. All right, so if you are opposed, uh, please raise your hand. Thank you. If you are uh, for, if you're in favor of the committee reports as submitted, please raise your hand. You haven't raised your hand, if you could please do that if you're in favor. All right, motion is carried. Andrea, I'll turn it back to you. Awesome. Consider some of the highlights of 2020, um, either in the church or in your own lives or in the world. Yeah. Oh, Sorry uh, for those of you who are in the middle of sentences. I, I'm glad that uh, Zoom gives you at least the countdown so you know it's coming, um, but... <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. No, that worked fine. Go on, go on, go on. <laughs> Well, friends, um, again, we'll just take two minutes. And if anyone wants to share either by just speaking out or including in the chat, some of the highlights that have stood out for you. I've got to go for lunch. Okay, Rob. <laughs> Bye, Rob. You can join us when you're done. Yeah. All right. <laughs> yeah. Rob. That's a highlight for Rob. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. One of our highlights was how fast we were able to like get up and do Zoom services so that we didn't miss any worship. And, you know, it's nice being able to see everybody. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was happy to see that the, I was happy to see that the homeless were being vaccinated because I was saying they, they have no way to trace their identification, medical history, anything like that, or their age even, you know? So to, to move them up in line and start to help them, which helps us. Yeah, Highlight has definitely been a care of the vulnerable this year. Yeah, that's the way. Any other highlights? Sorry, we were celebrating the fact that that thanks to to Zoom and WhatsApp and and things that we're in touch with people from our our 
childhood and our earlier days all over the world and uh, having conversations um, that are with you know people who we might not have been able to do that with and it's on a regular basis and we're all supporting each other. So that's really special. In our annual report, there are quite a lot of highlights um, in the church. I hope you had the chance to read it before today. And if not, um, it's still really relevant. Um, I think uh, it will be really exciting to read there. As we see one right now standing up, there were, I think, five babies in our congregation born. Um, lovely. We had a wedding. Um, we had a couple baptisms. Really exciting. This is great. Mm -hmm. Great. <laughs> All right. So um, I encourage you to continue uh, including any highlights in our chat, and I'll throw it back to Janice for the next part. Thanks, Andrea. Our next uh, motion is going to be to approve our slate of council members for 2021. And uh, before I ask for a mover and seconder, um, I just kind of wanted to highlight those that are vacant at this time. Uh, so our nominating chair, Christian development, worship, membership and care, social, and we need uh, another regional rep. And also new to the slate is an equity and inclusion chair which is exciting. So just to highlight those. So if I could ask for a, a mover on the motion to accept the council membership slate for 2021. I will. Thanks, Alex. And a seconder. Okay. I will. Thanks, thanks. I, I think that was Ashley. And if not, we've got Elizabeth in there too, Brian. And again, I'll first, I'll ask for votes against. So if you are opposed to this motion, if you would raise your hand now, please. Andrea, I'm not able to see the voting at this point. Can you um, just let me know what you're seeing? No oh, hands have been raised. Okay, thanks. And then all those in favor of accepting the 2021 slate? Can you see those now, Janice? Yes, thank you. And if you haven't voted, if you could do so now, please. All right, motion carried. Okay. So friends, we, um, we come back, we have talked about a little bit about um, what has happened in 2020, um, which is more than we could probably spend five days talking about that's happened. So just some highlights. Um, and now we're kind of moving toward looking toward the future. Um, we, you know, by the United Church, by all church standards, we've had a fantastic year. Um, we haven't lost anyone to COVID. We have unfortunately lost a, a number of, of people um, who've died, but, and we, um, we hold them in our hearts and we hold the heartache that we couldn't really join to say goodbye to those people the way we'd like to, but um, we also know how fortunate we are uh, to have a balanced budget, um, to be able to continue to meet, to have so much support and love, um, not only for the Westminster community, for um, the congregations of other faiths that are a part of us, but also for the whole world, um, which we show every day, um, and especially through those things we've already highlighted. So now I'd like to share a brief video about some of the hopes that um, your council members had going forward. <clears throat> and then we're going to 
put you into breakout rooms and I'll randomize them again so that you get a chance to try and talk to different people. And I'll, I think I'll make, try and make the groups a little bigger so that we don't have uh, too many, like just two people in them. Um, but in this, so just so you're aware, when we um, go into the next group, you're gonna be talking about, um, this is something that the elementary school teacher shared with us, Janice. We're gonna talk about two stars and a wish. So two stars are two things that excite you in 2021. And a wish is perhaps a concern or something that's weighing on you for 2021. So just so you're aware that will be coming up. But before we get there, I would love to share with you this video. My hope for Council for 2021 is that we will emerge from this experience as a better, revised, more inclusive and equitable version of ourselves. My hope is that we will continue to do the work required to achieve this. The inclusion team has had three sessions so far and we've discussed themes around power and anti-oppression work, reciprocal relationships from a traditional Indigenous knowledge perspective, disability in church, and our hopes for moving forward in 2021 is that we can dig into even more around sexuality and faith, anti-racism and religion, treaty as sacred covenant, um, supporting housing stability, um, and really looking at strategies at this point. So we've done our three checklists, we've benchmarked ourselves in those areas, now what can we do about it? Um, how can we create spaces for formal and informal care and not just in crises? And how can we be accountable and design in accessibility into our worship and the way that we lead and our leadership opportunities? And how can we weave in the whole community, so all of you too, so it's not just the team doing this work, and really make it um, as fulfilling as, as the potential has. So we uh, invite you into this process as we revision what it looks like to be equitable at Westminster. My hopes for 2021. It would feel good to listen to Cynthia play the piano and hear the choir sing in the sanctuary. But we've learned so much about using technology to keep members connected in new ways that I hope we continue to evolve in this direction. Now, if we could only figure out how to actually eat together, <laughs> that would be good. Another hope is that we have learned from events both locally, nationally, globally this year. Maybe be able to reflect and I hope act together to move forward for ourselves and for others. Initiatives at Westminster are doing just that. My hopes for 2021 are that we continue to listen to each other and build on our positive faith community. My hopes for 2021 um, continue generosity to support everything, hoping for more government grants and hoping for some fundraising ideas. Hello. My hope for Westminster in 2021 is that we find a renewed sense of purpose. To quote a Saturday Night Live skit, we need more cowbell. Definitely more cowbell. So worship in 2020 had quite a steep uh, learning curve when it came to technology. So now that that's out of the way and we can focus a little bit more on alternative ways to engage in worship and we're going to take and incorporate your feedback from a recent survey on ways that we can be doing social justice um, with our church as well as ways that we can enhance um, and engage with you in worship and outside of worship um, and take those ideas like Easter pageants, teach what you love lessons, equity conversations, food truck dialogues, um, brunch Sundays and virtual field trips and more variety in music and really play, um, which I think will be a lot of fun uh, for Reverend Andrea and the team. Um, so we will also be considering returning to in-person worship, hopefully, um, maybe in the fall. Who knows? We're going to follow public health guidelines um, and also keep live streaming services when we do return to in-person for those that um, this met a need for. So lots of things to look forward to in 2021. <laughs> All right, friends, so I'm going to put you into 
your groups. Um, I'm just gonna grab that question and put it in the chat here. <clears throat> so when we come back, we're not gonna have a time where we discuss what you've talked about, um, but you'll be encouraged to include your stars and your wishes in the chat after. Um, and, oh, so, um, we're going to put you into these breakout groups, um, but an option if you're feeling breakout group enough, <laughs> then um, feel free to not go into that breakout group, but instead either draw a picture of some of your stars and your wishes or write it out, um, spend a little bit of time journaling if that's something that you really enjoy or drawing. So again, an invitation to <clears throat> type into the chat your stars and your wishes. Um, they could be either personal stars and wishes or the ones uh, that your group talked about. So feel free to include that in the chat box. As we move to our 2020 a look back at our financial report. Oh. Woo! <laughs> So I'm going to pass that over to Paul um, and spotlight him, hopefully. Spotlight him. Hello, Paul, you're spotlighted. Okay. <laughs> uh, Paul, do you want me to pull up the stuff on the yeah, screen? Yeah, you might as well. So there. Okay. So when we met last year, we had... Um... <laughs> we had passed a budget that had this twelve thousand um, dollar deficit, and we ended up much better than that through a lot of unusual circumstances. So, uh, anyway, um, so so here's a little summary here. Oh, this is the expenses. Can you go back one slide? There. So we had um, a, a a lot more. Um, money come in this year than last year, um, which was wonderful. And a lot of that came in the stewardship campaign. Uh, a lot of memorial donations this year, particularly from Lynn McCauley um, and also Ron Franco. Um, a lot less fundraising because we weren't able to um, do a lot of things we normally do. So all we got done was the uh, Robbie Burns dinner and the pancake supper. And, um, and we weren't able to do our big uh, garage sale or Elmira Maple Syrup Festival or any of our other dinners. Um, interest is just down a little bit, um, a little less tax rebates because we spent less money. And one thing that we got this year, uh, the government introduced this um, wage subsidy. So encouraging people to keep uh, businesses to keep people on payroll. And so they looked at your revenue from last year and compared it to this year. And if it dropped below a certain level, they would give you um, some money to contribute to payroll. So we got just over 19,000 from that. A lot of that came from not having the Maple Syrup Festival, not having the garage sale, not having rentals in the summer. Um, so, so those particular months we were down a lot and we got the maximum we could. Okay, if you go on to the expenses. For the expenses, we just see salaries up a bit more because um, Andrea started partway through the year last in 2019. So now we have her for the full year. Um, music's down a little bit. Um, we didn't, um, we weren't buying music. We only had the piano tuned once. And uh, Steve also took the um, emergency response benefit for a few months because he was missing out on other income in his life. So uh, he, he went on that. We did spend some money on the live streaming equipment, did a deposit on that. And then some of our other expenses are lower. A lot of the committees didn't spend what they normally do. So if you go on to the next one, the summary, um, this is just showing you know, what we got in, what we paid. So we ended up with a $10,000 surplus in the end, um, which is quite remarkable. <laughs> um, and, uh, and, and we can use that towards next year, which is good. And you go on the next slide. These are just the funds that we have within the church. So just give me a little summary. 
um, the bequest fund earned some interest, which we moved over to our general account and the next fund. Can you just move to the next one, Andrea? Sorry. Yeah. The caring and sharing fund, we had um, a donation to that and we did spend a bit of money on that. And then the sanctuary fund, um, we spent a bit of money on the live streaming equipment for that as well. And uh, we did a deposit in 2020, which was paying for half of it. And we have since paid for the rest of it this year because it's been installed. And one more slide, I think. Is the, oh, and donations from other, we've given to other things. So Mission Service Fund was up uh, about 2,500 and we gave a lot more to Oxford House. Um, I know we quoted a different number to you. This is what came in 2020. We did have money come in January. But so this is wonderful news, what we gathered here. And then the next slide, I think, is just some highlights. Yeah. So just what we have in our bank account at the moment. Uh, we have a mortgage with Temple Shalom. They keep paying it down. And then we have a mortgage with uh, Ventures and Mission that we're very slowly paying down. <laughs> and the next slide. And again, just our highlights, we raised um, an amazing amount of money for Oxford House. Uh, again, the Mission Service Fund, our offerings were up. Um, we were unable to do most of our fundraiser, but we did receive um, government assistance. We were able to pay everybody what they would normally receive. And um, the cedars had some lower costs because we didn't have to heat everything and water and all that as much, but they also lost revenue from rentals. But we did have the food trucks come in August and hopefully they will come again to help us out. Um, does anyone have any questions on 2020? So what was about the Sri Lanka? I'm sorry? That you all had given some donations to Sri Lanka? What does that mean? Oh, um, so last year in 2019, I, I forget what that was for. If Sri Lanka had, had a natural disaster, or was there something else? Somebody had given money to go to Sri Lanka anyway. And so I, I contacted the Mission and Service Fund and they made sure it went to a, a program that was in Sri Lanka. Oh, okay. Yeah, sometimes we get money in that people want to go to a cause, so we try to find a good cause. Any other questions? Okay. All right, so at this point, I will make a motion to approve the financial report for 2020. If I could ask for a mover for that, please. Mm -hmm. Jeremy will. Thank you, Jeremy. Jeremy Allen. And it looks like Brock is has a hand up to second that. Thank you, Brock. And again, I will ask for those that are opposed first to raise your hands. If you are opposed, please press the raised hand button. Thank you. And if you are in support of this, if you are in favor, please raise your hand now. All right, motion is carried. I was just going to point out as people are voting, um, we have a few folks adding some big thanks to Paul for all he does, not only financially, but um, as someone who's trying to juggle a few things today. I mean, I've always been appreciative what Paul does Sundays, but today I'm like, oh, Paul. <laughs> it's a full time job. <laughs> Andrea, I, I would I would uh, beyond second that uh, Paul and I work, of course, on the ministry and uh, personnel committee as well, and his input is un so valuable. It's just uh, you know. So thank you, Paul. Thanks very much personally. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs>
Okay. Um, so now we'll move on to the budget. <laughs> <laughs> now that we like him, let's talk about <laughs> Now I'll question him. <laughs> okay. Okay, so we have um, some um, guidelines we do in setting the budget. And, and one thing we wanna do is keep our um, general fund at at least $5,000 to help cover unexpected things. Uh, we are assuming the offerings will grow according to um, the stewardship campaign. And that has been consistent in the past. We've always been very, very close to the campaign. We are, proposing to increase salaries by 2.2% for all staff. The United Church of Canada is raising all salaries that amount and we've applied it across um, everyone. Um, and then we will make whatever mortgage payments we can um, to keep our budget balanced. Okay. So, um, during the stewardship campaign, a lot of you did increase your offerings. However, uh, we are going to lose um, some of the money we were getting from Manulife that we're matching some uh, donations from their employees uh, as they discontinued that program. We've also had a couple of people die that we're uh, providing as well. So we're seeing offerings go down almost 10,000 there. Um, I don't have anything for memorial donations. Hopefully we don't have that. <laughs> Um, I put a bit in for fundraising, hoping that we would do something. Um, the United Church is just providing guidance to try to be very conservative in our budget and present, um, you know, a realistic or a worst case scenario. We are doing our online auction, which will hopefully bring this in. And hopefully come the end of the year, we'll be able to do a few more things. Um, interest is way down. I had a bunch of things invested at 3% and that is unheard of now and they've all matured and most things I'm getting 1% or less. So we're gonna see interest drop a lot. And then tax rebates about the same. And I put a bit in for the wage subsidy back when I did the budget, the government was planning to wind this down very quickly. They have since um, changed their mind on that. We've already received 2000 from the first two months. so. I expect we will get a considerable amount of money again from that program. Uh, they'll continue it until, uh, right now I think it goes to June, but until they open things up, it'll be, um, uh, we should continue getting some. And then on to the expenses. Um, again, the salaries is um, going up the 2.2%. Um, Cedars is keeping pretty much the same on the cost for running the building. Uh, the music's going up the 2.2% and we'll pay Steve for the whole year. Um, and then I, I put in another, uh, assuming our committees would spend the amount of money we expected last year, um, that may or may not happen, but just trying to be conservative there. Um, and you can see at the very bottom there, this means we're projecting a deficit of 35,000, um, which is significant. However, I do think that is the absolute worst case scenario. I do anticipate it being better than that. Um, if you go on to the next slide. Uh, mission and service fund just from the stewardship campaign, we see it going up and I just put an amount in for Oxford House, but um, just as a placeholder to keep track of it. And is there another slide? Yeah. So this just shows a bit um, the bank account um, going down to this 5,000 amount that we want. Um, keeping, uh, we're gonna spend money out of the sanctuary improvement fund to finish paying for the um, live streaming equipment. And that's already been paid for, so we're done. And it came in a little less than expected. So that was wonderful. The bequest fund here, I'm proposing that we will use 17,000 of it to um, help with our deficit and then the temple mortgage keeps going down and the veteran mission mortgage goes down a little bit okay do you have any questions on the budget
I know it looks ominous, but I do think we can do it. <laughs> Paul, the uh, committee work wouldn't have included any equity and inclusion budget. No, no, it did not. No. And we're going to bring that up after this. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Diane, Paul, do you still want your uh, hand up? Sorry. Um, I, I'm, I'm off mute. You're um, muted, Diane greenholz Wasting. Sorry. I said, no, that was my question that uh, Brian just expressed. Okay. And Dennis, did you have a question? Well, Paul, I just thought I would uh, maybe, uh, I don't know, raise the question that, that do you feel that, that we're, you know, because of what it looks like for 2021, that we're in any need to to have any kind of uh, um, discussion, well, fundraising, yes, but discussion around any adjustments. I'm going to use that word uh, in, in any manner. I, I'm just, I just wanted to kind of see if, if you felt that that council maybe, you know, might need to have some discussion going forward. Certainly going for. I mean, I would hope a year from now, we can return to our fundraising activities and that. Um, it's certainly something I think council should talk about as the year goes on, as we see where we're heading in that. Um, mm -hmm. It's hard right now, there's a lot of unknowns yes, and it's hard yes. to do anything else. Um, we, we've had a couple of large surpluses, which we're going to use up this year, um, but um, certainly this what's happening this year cannot go forward but i am hopeful that a year from now we'll be having some fundraising opportunities and um and other things may come from other things we're doing as well sure, sure. to bring in money yeah i just thought I'd, as they say raise the issue in the sense that that you know it's always an ongoing concern for every organization that you know on the expense side uh you know it's always good to be able to to offer kind of what we've been doing in the past and even doing more, but then there's always the question of often having to look at what our expenses are and what we yeah. might have to do if we oh, had to. Yeah, and we could certainly do that. Yes. Yeah. Anyway, thank you, Paul. Yeah. And Sue Ann, do you have a question? Yeah, Paul, could you speak a little bit to the wage subsidy? So last year we got about $19,000, right? And yes. I know you put conservative estimate in. So you know, are we looking at something similar likely? I mean, I don't know if you know how it's going to roll out or have they cut that down? I mean, just to get a, you know, maybe a less scary number out of this. <laughs> um, I would think we'll probably get a half of that amount anyway, if it goes to June, because our biggest fundraisers are in the first part of the year. So I, I do think, I think we'll get eight or 9,000 now looking at the program. Great, thank you. Any other questions? All right, so I will make the motion. I, I can move it. <laughs> I, I, sorry, I, sorry I, I'm happy to move it, uh, Dennis. Uh, Dennis uh. Thanks, Dennis. And someone to second as well, please. I will. Thanks, Alex. All right, I'll, again, I'll ask, oh, sorry. Um, Ashley, was that a question or just you were gonna second? All right, so That's again, I, 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 okay, thanks. Again, I will ask for those opposed to vote first, please. If you are opposed to the 21, 2021 budget as presented, please raise your hand now. Thank you. If you are in favor of the 2021 budget, please raise your hand now. Motion is carried. All right, Andrea, I'll turn it back to you. Mm -hmm. 
And we'll actually turn it over to our musicians who've been standing by. Um, <clears throat> we're gonna have another hymn. We'll sing verses one and two of Voices United 299, Teach Me God to Wonder. Um, and if you have your hand up because you want to speak, just unmute yourself to speak. Otherwise, we'll we'll put your hands down if you if you don't. We've lost one singer, so everyone sing loud, okay? Awesome, thank you so much. <laughs> And now <clears throat> I will hand it over to, I think Janice, you're, uh, we move into the time of new business. And so Janice, I'll pass it on to you. Do you want me to put the slides up? Sure, that would be great. Thanks, Andrea. So I'm coming to you on behalf of the equity and inclusion team. And I would like to present a revisioning process for Westminster. This will inform the congregation of the work that has been happening so far with equity and inclusion. And we are wanting to seek input from the congregation as we move forward towards a more equitable and inclusive church. So as stated on the slide, it became clear through the work of the equity and inclusion team that we needed to revise our statements of purpose last visited in the 1990s. Why are we doing this work? Well, to quote Laura Black, our facilitator for equity and inclusion, we are doing this work because we believe in our collective power to make every person feel valued in our church, local and global communities. We are inspired by the strength and the work lived out in the experiences around us and the affirming spirit that originally called us to Westminster. We want to live out God's dream, realize our biases, openly discuss challenges, change for the better, and open our arms to more people. So the first point is that through the revisioning process, it keeps us current. What are the mission statement, vision, and values. What are they for us today? What does it mean? So as a congregation, we've taken pride in our history of being innovative, forward thinking, cutting edge, which for one includes the very creation of the Cedars as a shared worship space for both Temple Shalom and Westminster. And in 1999, Westminster became the first United Church in the Hamilton Conference to become an affirming congregation. But some time has passed since these events, 22 years to be exact. So what has changed within our church, the local and global community? How do we currently identify and live out the word of God? Does our mission statement, vision and values reflect these changes? The second point, it will inform our living story of faith for the church hub. This is something that our church um, is required to do. And by having this revisioning process, it will give us a chance to really identify that and 
to establish who we are. Third, it focuses our goals and collaborations as we consider calls to social action from the United Church and the local community, which has always been important for our congregation. And fourthly, it weaves in the whole congregation for equity and inclusion work. So the revisioning process requires um, and encourages participation from the entire congregation so that we can uh, go forward and look at this work as a whole, a whole team, a whole congregation. Can you do the next slide, please, Andrea? So just to define what does revisioning mean? It means a change or a set of changes that corrects, improves, or creates a new version of something. It may be a catalyst for further uh, revisions elsewhere. And the next slide, please. So what could this process look like? Currently, uh, the team has been seeking uh, three proposals in draft form from EDGE, Credence and Company, and the Common Cause Consulting for comparison. The recommendations from equity and the inclusion team include hiring one or more of these experienced facilitators and graphic recorders to guide us with their resources, expertise, objectivity, networks, et cetera. To lead a series of workshops, learning activities, discussions, lived experiences, assessments, and drafting sessions over many months to revision altogether yeah, and to form a subcommittee or have consultants draft the statements of purpose to be approved by the congregation and then communicated. Janice, a, a question um, has come in uh, that perhaps we should explain what Church Hub is and how it's different from the hub that we uh, did last week. Right. Um, Andrea, would you be willing to speak to that? <laughs> sure. So a church hub, for those who aren't familiar, is completely separate from the hub, which um, is a United Church thing, but they're they're like almost like, in a way, a congregation, the hub that we uh, had a field trip to last week. Um, church hub is something that when we uh, went through the, the changes in the United Church, the changing from presbyteries and conferences to just regional councils, there was a lot of uh, other changes that happened, one of which was that a lot of what happens with respect to churches and like hiring people or, or searching out for people or, or even just keeping track of um, how churches are doing, monitoring kind of the health of congregations, moved to Church Hub, which is monitored by a number of paid positions. Um, but Church Hub is something that if you're looking for a new minister, you would go there and ministers, um, all ministers, all ministry personnel um, have to have a profile on there. Um, and if you are um, not in search for someone, you just sort of update it. They keep track of making sure that you have your annual declaration of um, vulnerability check. Um, and some of those things. And if you are in search, then that's also the place where you would post um, any resumes and things like that. And churches who are in search also post um, their, um, I, I forget the terminology of what they call them, but sort of like their, what we used to call the JNAC, um, like you're about who you are. Um, but churches now are being encouraged to update your, they call it your faith story which is just sort of a highlight about the, your church. And part of that is so that um, some staff members are able to kind of keep an eye and just make sure you're being supported as a congregation the way you need to be. Um, keep an eye to see if there's anything that they can help uh, support you with. Um, Joan, I wonder, you worked for a regional council, so you might have a little bit of a better idea. Is there anything I'm missing that would be really important to share? No, I think you've covered most of it. Um, it's a centralized place 
um, for processes around ministry personnel and communities of faith to to work through and um, yeah, and trying to keep it updated so that you're ready. Like if you needed to call a minister or whatever, you'd be more ready to go. So yeah, I think you covered it. Sorry for the interruption, Janice. No, thank you so much, Andrea and Joan, for providing uh, some clarification around that hub. So what's going to happen now is, um, Andrea, can you maybe put up the next slide with the questions on it? Oh. Um, so yes, that's good. So sorry, you can go back to that one, yeah. So obviously this is an investment. The current estimated cost is around $7,000 for consultants and honorariums. Grant funding is likely available or there could be possible use of our bequest fund. Proposals break down each piece in the pricing so we can design it to fit our wishes and our budgetary needs. And if you would share the next slide, Andrea. So what we would like to do at this point is to have you consider these questions based on the information that I presented. And we are going to go into breakout rooms to do that. I will also, um, I'll just go over the questions. So what are your concerns if we do pursue this opportunity? What are your concerns if we do not pursue it? Would you support council hiring a consultant consultants to facilitate a visioning process for Westminster to revise our statements of purpose? And then what would make you feel more comfortable with this idea? So once we um, go into breakout rooms and come back out, we will be doing um, a polling vote just to get a sense of where you are with that. And also, if you have um, concerns that you want to share, I'll ask you to send those to Brian Black. You can do that um, directly to Brian uh, through the chat. You can email him as well. So if we can take this time to go into breakout rooms and just and uh, share what we're thinking. And Andrea has just posted in the chat those questions for your reference again. Just reminding everyone in the chat that yeah. please share your thoughts with Brian via his email or directly to him in the chat. Andrea, does it look like we have everybody back? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I was just going to say our next step is that Andrea is going to put up a poll. Are you able to show that now, Andrea? Yep. All right. So um, our question is, would you support council hiring a consultant consultants to facilitate a visioning process for Westminster to revise our statements of purpose? The choices are yes, I am definitely in favor of this idea. I like this idea, or I have no opinion. I'm not sure about this idea. No, I am not in favor of this idea. So if you could please take a moment and respond to the poll, that so would be appreciated. Could I just interject here for a moment? Because not every group may, <clears throat> excuse me, may have had uh, a discussion that, that we were looking at at the bequest fund. This is a one-time thing uh, that that I think some people are looking at as a way of building for the future. So it's, it, it wouldn't necessarily be out of the immediate operating costs. It, it could be some, some funding that could be taken from the bequest fund. Because I know a number of people are very concerned about our deficit, legitimately so. Uh, but uh, I just think that was one aspect that if it wasn't discussed in your breakout group, it's something to keep in mind that it doesn't necessarily have to come from the immediate operating uh, cost and, and you know and, and revenues, but in fact could possibly by it would have to be a vote of council, etc. But could come from uh, potentially potentially from the bequest fund. 
There is also um, grant funding available for new ministries and initiatives, and a lot of it currently right now, so through the United Church. So we are aware of possibilities to get funding that way. Thanks, Donna and Laura. So if you haven't had a chance to answer the polling vote, if you could please do that. How do we access the poll? It should be coming up just on your screen. Okay, hasn't happened yet. Mm. I don't know else? how to relaunch it for you mm -hmm. without closing it for everyone. Um, perhaps- uh, Oh, got it. Oh, you got it? it? Yeah, there was a poll in progress. Uh, up on up in the top corner, I tapped it and thank you. If for whatever reason you're not able to access it, just send what your response would be to either Brian, myself, or Joan. Um, not Joan, sorry. <laughs> I mean, if you want, but uh, to Janice. Um, although right now we've got 20 of 21 people have voted, so I'm gonna give. Oh. Um, Okay, the one person who hasn't has just sent me a message. So that they are definitely in favor. So I'll share those results with you. So we have 45% of the people who voted plus one more said, yes, I'm definitely in favor. 30% said they like the idea. Nobody had no opinion, <laughs> which isn't surprising. 20% uh, said they weren't sure about the idea and 5% were not in favor of this idea. So that's really helpful feedback. So at this point, um, we're going to move on to the next item of new business. And that is an internship uh, presentation by Laura Black. All right, so I apologize if I freeze. My internet has been doing wonky things all week, but I will keep talking because I'm, I'm assured that you can still hear me even though my face might look a little skewed at different times. <laughs> um, so the supervised internship role at Westminster, um, we've just been doing some preliminary research. Uh, there were people who reached out, particularly after we had Reverend Evan um, come and do pulpit supply for us recently. And in the coffee and conversation time, one of the things that was shared was their partner is currently looking for an internship and how difficult that process has been. And I think that got members of our congregation to talk about how could we be supporting new ministers? And is that a way that actually could meet some of our needs currently as a congregation? And so we wanted to start looking at just what would that look like and bring that forward to you um, for a sense of direction on whether we should continue that research um, and bring it back to you with more of a formal proposal. So a paid internship definitely has many benefits for all. So leadership and accountability is something we're being asked for across the United Church. Um, so social action, for instance, now with anti-racism and equity um, and our commitment to that as a denomination as of um, this past year. Um, definitely requires the whole church's buy-in. That's what the United Church has been saying. And they're gonna be starting to look for us to be doing some of that work. And then there's further steps, for instance, that we need to maintain our status as an affirming congregation that is coming our way. Um, and that's something that's been brought up at council and has yet not to have direct leadership um, to help us um, stay accountable to those. Our position for Christian development has been vacant for at least four years now, I believe. Um, and so our commitment to children and youth work and programming, adult programming outside of worship and Christian development, um, this could potentially support those types of opportunities. Um, and Reverend Andrea has definitely included and embedded some of that, um, but it could further support and provide direct leadership and accountability for that. 
As we talked about a lot today, equity and inclusion has, um, has definitely been something that a lot of us are driven and hopeful for. And uh, needing direct leadership and accountability was something that right from the get-go, the council was saying, we're not gonna do this work unless we're holding ourselves really accountable to it. And having someone in a paid leadership uh, role would support that. And these are just some of the inequities that we've noticed around the pandemic even has kind of exasperated those things. And so what can we be doing to meet those gaps? Um, ministerial support. So um, I don't know if many of you know, but Andrea Allen is accepted as a um, doctorate student moving forward this year. So um, this is one way that we could help her growth as a supervisor. Um, and she is actually taking steps already to complete some of that education to be um, credentialed as a supervisor. It could help provide pulpit supply and um, support with some additional worship committee as currently um, there is no one else other than Reverend Andrea on that committee. And then nurtures church and the students. So it helps add an appointment, decreases stress because there are only a limited amount of opportunities available currently for placements, trains our future ministry leaders, and we're quite flexible congregations. So we um, will hopefully a lot of these things that we're looking for will meet the learning needs of those students as well. Next slide, Andrea. Perfect. So what would this look like in our preliminary research? Um, again, it's about approximately 30,000 salary for a 20 per hour week position. Um, 20 hour per week position. Uh, that's estimated based on United Church's um, payment steps, cost of living, all of those things include some reimbursements for continuing education, vacation, all of those type pieces that we've, um, that would have to be fleshed out a, in more detail by MMP, but before they start doing all that work, um, again, we're, we're kind of coming to you for direction. These are the recommended amount of hours from the Office of Vocation. So they actually suggest because the students in school not to do a full-time position. Um, and time range could vary from eight months to three years, depending on the stream that we pursue. Eight months is a very specific kind of one um, placement for our diaconal student, for instance, um, versus they do recommend multiple years for an ordained student or other types of ministry. Um, we could, for instance, set it as a one year um, and then have it renewed potentially um, depending on the student, it is helpful for them sometimes to have a more consistent involvement in a congregation. And it's also helpful for the congregation to not have turnover in those roles. Um, but I do realize this is also something that we're piloting for the first time at our congregation. So we have already begun to look into grant and seed funding possibilities to support and maybe even cover. Um, I know it seems like a large amount, but uh, cost of this position. Um, so Barb Elliott Fund um, could be up to $5,000. That's something we could apply for in the next month. And it's something we have experience applying for um, uh, in other, some of our congregation members have experience applying for in other ways. And we think we would be successful. Um, Matthew McGregor uh, was a a member at, uh, um, at Westminster United Church, and he has passed away in this last year. And through our work on equity and inclusion and uh, Laura McGregor's work and involvement in that team with us, um, Laura has come forward and is willing to provide $10,000 from Matthew McGregor's estate for a role, um, a position that would help us towards equity and inclusion goals. Um, so that is something that is quite um, as long as we're meeting that need um, is something that they're willing to provide us. Supervised ministry education supports grants. So that's for specifically supervised internships uh, through the United Church. You can get up to $15,000 if you have less than 150,000 in the bank, which as we know from our financial report today, we're right on track. So um, United, United Possibilities Fund is a grant we've applied for for our live streaming equipment and also has a new ministries aspect to it that we could possibly apply for and so on. So there's definitely opportunities to fund this um, and we, um, I, I feel quite confident in a lot of those. The candidate could come from any stream that we choose, as I said, so diaconal, ordained, lay, other related denominations, for instance, um, Ellen um, Baton Walker, who used to attend Westminster, um, took courses at Lutheran Seminary and so on. So we might choose um, some 
less, uh, less dominant um, related students as well. That's something we could look at depending on applications. But the process, the learning goals and funding opportunities may differ slightly between those streams, uh, but we could include that in an upcoming proposal. What would an anticipated timeline look like for this? So we do need to update, approve, and post our living faith story as we talked about in the last one for the church hub. This is something we plan on doing anyways as a council um, and applying for grants would start as soon as we can depending on the timelines for those grants. Um, so we're looking at February to April this year of starting at least those initial, initial processes um, and creating and drafting, um, yeah, the faith story. And then reviewing applications, interviews, and selecting candidates wouldn't happen until August to December is what we're thinking. Um, that would be for a January start date of a supervised intern and um, a support committee would have to be activated by that point. A support committee would look like five members that don't have involvement in another aspect of the church. So for instance, they could not be on council. Um, they would be specific to this role. Um, and the reason we think January start date is it puts us in a new financial year. It allows us enough time to do a lot of these steps um, and, uh, and figure out, you know, with pandemic times and all of that, allow some of that to settle on us to figure out um, returning to church uh, in person and so on. Uh, in the meantime, what that does mean, though, is most placements do start in September. So we would have less options of people in a January start date potentially. But it also means people who start in Jan who require an internship in January usually don't have the same amount of options as the people in September because most people have tried to attempt to get someone for September. Um, so they might have less options as well um, to seek out. So all that being said, we're asking very similar questions as we discussed um, for the last one, and we want you to get into breakout rooms um, to have the same conversations. So what would your concerns be if we do or do not uh, pursue this opportunity? And then we'll be coming back and polling you on the question, would you support council exploring the idea of a paid intern for Westminster? with the understanding that we will come back to the congregation later with the formal proposal to be voted on. Um, so it, it, this is not the final say on this, um, but we do realize uh, we will want your, your feedback on that, uh, but it's a lot of effort to go into putting all those details together in a proposal. And if people aren't feeling that direction, then that would be helpful for us to know, or it would be helpful to inform what research we do do and what questions you need um, answered in that proposal. So you're gonna get into breakout rooms. Andrea will apply uh, that. Um, and what we're asking you to discuss is, does it align with Westminster's ministry? Does it meet our needs currently? And then what concerns do you have if we do and do not pursue it? If we're ready uh, for the poll. Uh, our question is, would you support council exploring the idea of a paid intern for Westminster with the understanding that we will come back to the congregation leader with a formal proposal to be voted on. Yes, I am definitely in favor of this idea. I like this idea. I have no opinion. I am not sure about this idea or no, I am not in favor of this idea. If you could put in your vote. Everyone's voted, well done. Whew. So our polling results are showing 74% are definitely in favor of this idea, 21 like the idea, and 5% uh, not sure about this idea. So thank you for doing that. That certainly helps to inform the direction of the possibility of a paid internship. At this time, I would like to ask if there is any other new business that anyone would like to bring forward. 
You can either just unmute or raise your hand. I'm not seeing anyone, but I will ask one more time. Does anyone have any new business they wish to bring forward at this time? Okay, it looks like no new business. So Andrea, back to you. Great friends, we have made it through the vast majority of the business of our meeting. We only have one more motion left. Uh, which will be the motion to adjourn. We'll get there very soon. Um, before we get there, I just want to confirm, Brock, are you still with us? Yes. The reason I ask Brock is that we're moving into our prayers of the people and there's a responsive part. You forgot about that. <laughs> no, never. So friends, um, the, the responsive part is the same as the other prayers we had at the beginning. We decided to incorporate a little bit of movement in our prayers uh, because we knew there'd be a bit of sitting. Didn't anticipate quite this long of sitting, but it's all been great stuff. Um, but here's another opportunity to pray with your soul, with your spirit, with your body as well. So I'll share that. Let us pray. We thank you, God, that you are always above us, below us, inside us, and all around us. We pray today that all you know, all you hope, all you love with all that we are. God, you who have called us to be the church in this virtual space today in which we have worshiped, we have shared, we have discussed, we have considered, we have prayed, we have sung and we have listened for your challenge. We have talked and shared and made decisions, and now our time comes to a close. So we go back into the world. In this time, we continue to hold in prayer all of your children who are hurting, all who are feeling unseen, all who feel forgotten. We pray that you might help us to find a way to be your hands and feet in this world so that people are seen fully as they are. They are loved exactly as they are. They are valued for all of the varied gifts they bring. We give thanks that your love cannot be contained within a box that is pre-prescribed. We pray that we might find ways to love your world and to share your word by jumping outside that box alongside you. As we continue about our day and week and year, fill our hearts with hope. As we live as followers of the way, embolden us to share our light with the world. And as we are all part of this community and many other communities, challenge us to build community wherever, whenever, and however we can. In the year to come, move within and among this community of faith, helping us to live up to the goals we have set for ourselves. Strengthen us in ways we hope for and in ways we do not expect so that next year when we gather, again, hopefully in person, to share the good and the bad that we can look back 
on another year past and continue to hope for years that are to come. We pray these in the name of the one whose name we bear, Jesus the Christ. Amen. And that now brings us to the final motion. And that is the motion to adjourn. Would someone please move this motion? Oh, please move this. Wow, so many. <laughs> Let's say Donna and then Diane Greenhalch as a seconder. Uh, and I guess at this point, I ask if we're all in favor of adjourning this meeting. Please raise your hand if you are. Motion is carried. Friends, as we leave this place, may we find the road that leads us toward life. May we take the turn that brings right relationships. May we pause to accompany others along the way and may we journey with God through Lent and long for the horizon and the dawn. May the grace of God be with us all.
thank you all who stayed. We're at 18 participants. We started at 27 and um, people got things to do. So we, of course, um, know. But we're so thankful for you diehards that stuck it through. So thankful. And there's more than 18 of you, but 18 devices. Thank now, you. can someone come over and help me get out of this chair? <laughs> Janice, uh, Janice, thanks for. It's you know, been so here. long. <laughs> Have a nice week, everyone. Oh, bye. Bye. Have a nice week. Bye bye. bye. Have a nice week. Thank you, Janice and uh, Cynthia and Andrea and Paul and everybody else who was involved and Laura, everybody else who was in involved in putting this all together. I know it's a lot of work and. Uh, and you can be proud of the fact that it went off very well. It did. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank yes. you. I think we may have even had.